Hi ho neighbors, it's Cody here with Secondhand Farms and today we're going to do a little bit more work on the old Ford. I've about decided I think I'm going to call this video series Tractor Talk, something like that. I haven't decided yet. But anyways. For y'all that haven't seen it, this is our uh, old 1952 Ford 8N. Um, had a video a while back where I welded that back on. It broke off on me. It's Still holding together, did some garden work. I worked up the garden over there and did some brush hogging. So, uh, anyways, found us a nice shade tree to work under. But today, um, I need to replace the spark plug wires because, which one was it? I was mowing the other day, there it is. And I hit a bump and it just started running like crap. And as you can see, <laughs> it has fallen down probably about just like that on top of this exhaust manifold and has melted a hole and uh, I don't know if I can get it to do it. Probably won't do it now that I want it to do it. But I'll show you. Show you it was arcing on top of those head bolts. There you go right there. You can see arcing on top of the head bolt. And you can tell it's it's sputting and sputtering. It's not running good. So, I hopped on the interwebs. And I found a whole set of spark plug wires. 15 bucks off of eBay. Free shipping. Can't go wrong with that. So, so let's get into it. It's pretty simple. So this is an ADN Ford. As I said earlier, um, these things were produced from 1947 to 1952. Uh, they they were the predecessor to the nine ends and the two ends. And but they, to look at them, they were mostly all they all look very very similar, very slight differences. But probably the biggest change is something you need to pay attention if you're ordering parts for these is if it's an eight n they changed them. I believe it was 1950. It went from a front mount distributor, the distributor here, instead of being on what they call the side, this is the side mount because it's a 52, um, instead of being on the side, it was on the front. They were a booger to set the, change the cools on and stuff, but anyways, that is your major difference because the points are different, the coals different, the coal actually went inside the distributor. They were funky, um, but they, they run for a lot of years. And they still run now. I mean, this one here is one of the newest ones that there is, being a 52. That was the end of the production year. But it's next year, you think about it, that's it's going to be 70 years old. And it still pulls its weight around here. So, uh, anyways, here's my coal, or here's my wires. Uh, the, my best suggestion is, is don't yank them all off at once. But if you do lose track and you still have one on there somewhere, I will show you a little tip to help you figure out where it needs to go back. So they're numbered one, two, three, four, um, starting from the front. So we'll go ahead and pull this longest one first. And then you find your longest of your new ones. Either that one. This one. this one slightly all right so and it's a good idea if you had some dielectric grease put a little dab in here and put a little dab in in your uh, distributor cap I don't have any so for today I'm just gonna put it on um, I, I guess I might have some somewhere so I just forgot about it um, I find it I'll put some on it later but you just push them down on there until they snap. Same with this. Work it down in there until it pops down in the socket. Move on to your next one. I decided this was the next longest one. These are longer than the old ones. Pop her down on there. 
Now I believe originally these had some sort of rail or something that went across the top and all of the uh, spark plug wires hung on it, but mine's missing it. I may look into getting one one of these days, but for now, um, I've got me some zip ties and I'm just gonna bundle them together and get them out of the way, so. my next longest one Now you'll notice this one here is different than the rest of them. It doesn't have a spark plug boot on it because it goes from your distributor to your coil. Like in here. A lot of times that one in the coil sticks down really good, which you know, of course you don't want it coming off, but makes it a bear to get out of there. There we go. All right, so there's that. They're all on there. I'll zip tie them up here in a minute. Um, you want to make sure that your wires seat down in here good because I'll show you on these. Sometimes this with the factory they they pulled it down too far, so uh, you may have to lubricate this. Uh, I use spit and slip it back and snap it. And make sure it snaps down in the cap good and then pull your boot down of course this ain't gonna move up very well see it'll slide up and down it's not fixed but snap it down in your uh, distributor first and then scoot your boot down and make sure it's sealed good here and it's sealed good on your uh, coil because dirt moisture that'll uh, cause a misfire issue later on down the road now i told you i was going to show you a little trick if uh if you lose track, um, it, it helps because these aren't actual this one. I haven't looked at my factory one. I replaced that, this distributor because it was wore out. You can, it's not as bad now with the bushing. Uh, I put a new bushing in it, but it was still too much slack. I was having a... So if you have a factory distributor and this one might have it, and I just can't see it because number one is actually up here, up against... The block so anyways this factory one that's a mark that we made before but if you look real close there is a witness mark right here and that tells you number one so when your rotor bug is pointing here then it should be on your number one wire now if you take your cap off I'm gonna crank it you ever crank it and you're not on the seat make sure it is in neutral it will run over you because mine doesn't have the push button fixed on the uh, on the transmission where it will only shift in neutral or only start in neutral so. all right now watch which direction this rotor buck turns <laughs> turns counterclockwise so if you have your witness mark where'd it go there it is you got your you got your rotor bug on your witness mark it's sitting in there like this so one is going to be back here so you get your cap you put your one wire number one wire see it loops around and it goes to number one now Something that kind of threw me, I didn't realize this when I was putting these wires on. I thought I had messed up. But the firing order on a flathead Ford is one, two, four, three. So as it's rotating backwards, you'll count one, two, then this one, next in line, goes all the way back to your four. 
and then you got three and then back to one so thought that was just a little helpful tip if you ever get lost i know i've had some especially the old ones that the little brass tangs are broke on you start pulling wires and then they'll get bumped and then they'll fall out and then you don't know where you're at so anyways that's just a little tidbit on how to find where number one is like i said there may be a mark on this distributor but i can't see it from here if you had a little inspection mirror that'd help you so let's uh zip tie all these wires up and make it look all pretty okay got my zip ties got my side cutters to get my hair cut after i get them all clipped here kind of tuck them all up under the uh, hood here boy i wish some of these some of these are just a little bit long but i'm not going to take them apart because they're already crimped together so i'm just going to bundle them up best i can probably if i'd have went with a more expensive set they probably would have been a little bit better and uh even if i'd have had so you can go to o'reilly's and get you just a universal set and uh, you have to crimp your own ends on it and stuff which nothing wrong with that but i'm in a hurry <laughs> a lot of times and uh, i hopped on ebay at, on break at work and i was like hey 15 bucks sure let's do that so i'm just gonna make do with these for now like i said she needs a lot of work but still gets the job done so make sure you're out of your fan <laughs> It'd be fun to kick it on. Wouldn't run long. Alright, so. Alright. They are out of the way of the fan, out of the way of the belts. I think we're good there. Give my little ties a haircut because they look a little neater. Just my main objective is is that they're not sitting on that head or definitely sitting on that exhaust manifold because you know, as you've seen it will melt them. And then we'll have a misfire and then it'll run like poo. Well, there's that. Let's fire it up and make sure she runs right. And just like that, a few minutes, and now she's ready to go brush hog or fill up the garden or whatever I need to do with it. That's why I love these tractors. They are dirt, dirt cheap, especially if you're willing to do a little bit of wrench turning on them. Now, I bought this one from the father-in-law for 500 bucks. Now, that was kind of a family discount price, but if you look, you can find a lot of these for anywhere from 500 for pretty rough on up to 2000 2500 for one that's just ready to work. But they're super, super simple. The flathead ports are practically unstoppable. I'm a Chevy guy, but Ford tractors are pretty decent. I bleed green as far as tractors go, but... This has got a special place in my heart. I really enjoy it. Uh, they they take a lick and keep ticking, I guess. Um, reason I wanted to share a lot of this was is there's so many of uh, those homesteads that uh, they break their backs doing things by hand because they're like, oh, we want to save up for a utility tractor so we can have you know this and that and. Now, is this going to replace a brand new utility? No, it, it's not. And it's you definitely got to settle for the old way of doing things versus the new loader, live PTO, you know, all that. But it, they, they work really good. And they're, they're definitely worth a look if uh, you can't afford a brand new tractor like we can't or even, even a decent used new one. 
from this decade. Um, but these things are super simple to work on. And uh, like I said, I think I want to call my uh, video series uh, Tractor Talk. And uh, I've got this one to work on. I've got my 730 John Deere diesel. I've got to put a water pump and thermostat in it. I'd like to take you guys along with me for that. And uh, there's, I mean, you know how it is when you have old stuff. Things break. You know, you use them. Uh, you use them new, old, doesn't matter, they break. So I just thought I'd share a little bit of wisdom with you. And maybe you learned something. Maybe you just enjoyed yourself. So uh, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.